Hi, hello, I am the Cyber Reef Guru. Thank you so much for watching. In my last video, I did a quick overview of the QCW frame from Onefinity, and that video generated a number of questions about whether or not the frame helped square the machine. And so thank you so much for your comments. They're very helpful, and I wanted to do a follow-up video to address some of those questions. Now the astute watcher will notice that I do not currently have the frame on my machine and I will talk about that at the end of the video about the choice that I made in that regard. So in this video, I am going to cover two techniques on how to square your machine. The first one is very easy to implement and provides fairly good results. The second one is just a little bit more complicated, but provides slightly better results. And so I will show you how I implemented these two techniques, uh, show you the results that I got with them, and then uh, kind of wrap it up at the end and talk a little bit more about the Onefinity and the frame. The first technique I would like to cover is an old carpenter's trick to test if your framing is square when you're building a house, and that is the use of a tape measure here, that you measure the corners of your machine and those two measurements should be identical. If they are identical, that means that your square or your machine is completely square. And if they are not, then it means it is some form of a parallelogram in one way or another. So I did this technique on my machine and I first measured from the back corner here to the front corner and I got 59 and 16 of an inch. And then I measured from that back corner to this front corner and I got 59 and a quarter. And so that tells me that my machine was out of square by about three sixteenths of an inch. And so what I did is I loosened all of the feet, foot bolts here, the bolts that are holding down the feet, and I adjusted the frame by picking up the back and sliding it uh, to one side and then the other side to the other side until I got the two measurements that were lined up exactly. And so that was pretty close in my measurements with the tape measure here. I did get it to within what it looked like a 64th of an inch or so, and so I thought that was pretty good. And then uh, that allowed me to move on to the second technique to uh, check the accuracy, if you will, of the first technique. So the second technique is using a square up against one side of your machine and then using the machine itself to test if the lengthwise here is completely perpendicular to the rails. And so now I did not have a square that was large enough to cover this area, so one of the gentleman on the forums posted an interesting technique where you can use two straight edges and a smaller square to replicate the large square function. And so that's what I did. I got one straight edge that I ran along the edge of the rail here. So that straight edge does need to be long enough to run the entire distance of your machine. And then I put the square up against that straight edge and I took the second straight edge and ran it along the other side of the square. And that created a very large square using the much smaller square. So what I did then is I took the machine, I jogged it over the edge in the left hand side of the machine here, and I put a uh, V cutter bit into the machine and I put the tip of the V cutter right on the edge of the straight edge here. And then I jogged the machine all the way to the other side to see if the V cut tip was still right on the edge of the straight edge. And it turns out for me that it was not. The bit was actually a little bit forward, about one or two millimeters or so. So now that I know that my machine is not perfectly square, I set about fixing that. And the way that I did that is I first removed all the bolts from the feet. I did leave the bolt in the front corner here, but I loosened it so that I could move the machine around. And then I took the straight edge along the X axis here and I pivoted it by holding the front corner and then moving it just a little bit so that the straight edge part of the straight edge was lined up to that V cutter on the left hand side here. So once the straight edge was in alignment here, then I fixed the square so that it was flush up against the straight edge. 
and then I adjusted the straight edge on the Y axis so that it was also in alignment with the square. And so what that did, it has actually created a gap in the back corner. I went back there and I picked up the foot and moved it so that it was in alignment with that straight edge on the Y axis. And then I went to the opposite side and picked up the foot and then moved it a little bit out as well. And then I uh, temporarily secured that back corner and I jogged the machine back to ensure that this side was in perfect alignment. And then I came to the front again and then checked to make sure that the uh, V-bit was still in alignment with the uh, straight edge on the X-axis. And so I temporarily secured all of the feet down and I reran the test to make sure that everything was still in alignment and it was, so I tightened down all the feet and that kept the machine in square throughout the entire process. So now that I have the machine square, let's go ahead and talk very briefly about the QCW frame and why I'm not using it. So if you recall from the last video, one of the issues that I had with the frame is the T-tracks were not properly sized for my Rockler clamps. And I do want to use those clamps in the future, and so therefore I chose not to use the frame in my future setup. I did talk to the folks at Onefinity and they do assure me that the new production frames are not only more robust, but the T-tracks are properly sized. So so I'm going to reach out to them and see maybe if I can get an updated version of the frame and maybe use it in a future product. Now I did square the machine on the frame to prove that it was possible. All I had to do was loosen all the bolts of the frame, do the same two techniques that I talked about earlier, and I was able to completely square the machine. So one thing that I did learn is it's probably easier to square the frame first and then put the machine on it. And because of the way that it does auto adjust on the frame, I do think that it would square the the machine almost instantaneously by having the frame squared because of the tolerances of the feet. However, I don't have any proof of that, so I do want to look into that in the future. Well, that was the video. I hoped you enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun to make, and it was a lot of fun uh, researching the different techniques to square your machine. So the two techniques, the one with the tape measure, is very easy to do, and the second technique with the large square or the series of straight edges is also fairly easy to do, but does provide slightly more accurate results, in my opinion. So if you like this type of content, please consider giving it a thumbs up. If you don't like it for some reason, please give it a thumbs up anyway, but leave your comments down below. Tell me how I can make future videos better. If you're not already following me on Instagram, please consider doing so. That's where I post pictures of projects like this that become future videos. All right, once again, thanks so much for getting this far. Thank you so much for watching the video, and don't forget to be inspired. So if, if you recall from the first video, or <clears throat> so if you recall from the last video, the hi, hello, I am the Cyber Reef Guru. Thank you so much for watching. In my last video, I did an overview of the QCW frame by the one by the Onefinity. No, <laughs> from Onefinity. So the first <clears throat> first mechanism, first technique. All right, measure, 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 Te tape measure. Measure.